Hello chefs, I'm Chef Arun from EISSMS College of Hotel Management and Catering Technology. In today's session, we are going to learn about the first and the most important ingredient used in bakery, that is wheat. The learning objective of this session is wheat, the parts of wheat, its byproducts, the milling process, and the types of flour. Before we get into the details, let's talk about the various facts of wheat that is known to us. It is the first known cereal to mankind and can be traced to around 30,000 BC. The other known facts is that it is the staple food of India. Various fermented and non-fermented breads form a part of the Indian meal, ranging from chapati, roti, naan, kulcha, etc. Also an English version that is bread is quite common in our households, commonly known as pao or double roti. The four basic byproducts of wheat known to us is dalia, that is broken wheat, suji, that is semolina, atta, which is whole wheat flour, and maida, which is refined flour. Now let's look at a video on the history of bread. Europe, 30,000 BC. We encounter the first archaeological findings that testify the existence of cereals and rudimentary bread. Man began cultivating the earth and changed from a hunter to a farmer. He abandoned nomadic life and settled down in one place. This is how the first organized settlements began to develop. Cereals became the main source of food, with wheat and barley being the dominant crops. We also have the first preparation of bread, that is a slurry of seed water baked on rocks in the sun. Ancient Egypt was considered to be the granary of the world. Good quality wheat was cultivated there for the first time. We encounter the first organized civilizations utilizing tools and animals. Bread was also born in the land of the Nile. It was the main food for the Egyptians. Herodotus wrote that bread first acquired an economic and social status in Egypt since it was used as currency to cover the salaries of both ordinary workers and senior officials. Bread was initially kneaded in a trough and baked on a hot plate where it became a type of pie. Later on, the dough was placed into a clay pot and cooked on embers. Yeast was discovered and this greatly improved the quality of bread. We encounter bread in different shapes and sizes in grave excavations. Carefully shaped bread accompanied the dead. We also encounter the first organized bakeries that bake bread in a clay oven and sell it, while many other types of bread began to be prepared using a mixture of other cereals and seeds, as well as fruits and herbs, such as dates and coriander. Bread was handed down by the Egyptians to the Jews, the Greeks and the Romans. The cultivation of common wheat was introduced from trading with Egypt. And this was the starting point for the production of good quality bread that was gradually enriched. The development of bread making was very rapid. The construction of ovens as we know them today, with a door and the capacity for preheating, has been attributed to the Greeks. Wheat bread was called artos. Hippocrates refers to different types of bread, sweets and biscuits. Later, Athenaeus, in the Learned Banquet, refers to 72 types of bread and the existence of organized bakeries. He even mentions the production of the first pizza, round dough on which they placed vegetables, cheese or oil and herbs that was known as placuntas. Following the complete conquest of Greece, the Romans were initiated into the art of baking by the Greeks and developed it. 
There were 300 organized bakeries in Rome during the reign of Emperor Trajan, with the first Baker's Guild and Greek bakers. The bakery's bread industry was comprised of five parts. The grinding mill, the domed oven, the storeroom, the sales area, and the baker's house. The Romans have also been credited with using beer yeast in bread making, which they discovered during the conquest of countries that produced beer, such as the Gauls, Britons, and Iberians. As the art of bread making developed, bread now had a prominent place in the daily diet of the Byzantines, where the bread quality varied in accordance with the type of flour as well as the manner in which cereals were milled. The bread was mainly produced from wheat, but also from barley. The Byzantines adored sweets and started developing pastry making. Even though it took a long time for sugar to be discovered, honey was in abundance to cover the many needs. Apart from honey, cireo or drosato, pomegranate syrup, was often poured over the sweets. Bread making remained the same amongst most cultures up till 1881 when electricity decisively altered people's lives. Many new recipes were developed throughout Europe together with the art of pastry making which have survived down to the present day and are cherished. We have croissant from Vienna, tiramisu, Panettoni and ciapata from Italy. Crepes, brioche, baguette, and millefeuille from France. Cake from Spain. And many other flavors that have now enslaved the world. We may not know with accuracy when mankind discovered cereals. But we know that after their cultivation, civilization started. Cereals help people to survive and domesticate animals. When man understood their importance, he decided to settle down in one place and start to cultivate them. That was a significant turning point for human evolution. Therefore, he began to build cities, communicate, write, and travel. Civilization began to develop. It is not surprising that bread was loved and appreciated by every culture, with a special position in daily life and religion. It is a precious commodity and will always be a basic element in our diet. I hope you liked the video and was quite informative. Moving on. The next slide shows us a picture of a wheat bed. And let's go into the understanding, its parts and its uses. The first is the outer covering known as the bran, which contains fiber and minerals. The center part, which is the endosperm, which is white in color, contains two major components. One is protein in the form of gluten, and is majorly responsible for the structure of bread. And the second one is carbohydrate, which in simple forms is starch and forms the main body. The third part of the wheat berry is the germ, which contains the fumule and the radical and plays an important role in grain germination. The next slide talks about the various wheat varieties agriculturally available to us. The first one in that is the hard red winter wheat, which is versatile with excellent milling and baking characteristics for pan bread. Hard red winter is also a choice of wheat for Asian noodles, hard rolls, flat breads, general purpose flour, and cereal. The next is hard red spring, soft red winter, soft white, hard white, and durum. Considering the protein content, the industry uses these three wheat varieties. 
The first one in that is Triticum STBM, also called as the hard wheat. This contains more proteins and therefore used in making breads. Triticum compactum, also called as soft wheat, this flour contains low proteins and thus used for making biscuits, cakes, and pastries. Triticum durum, the third variety, also called as durum wheat, this wheat is mainly used to prepare semolina and macaroni. Once the grain is available to us, it is milled to obtain flour. Now, how do we get flour? The first type of milling is stone milling. Stone milling is the age-old process which is used to obtain flour and with the upgradation of technology can be milled to flour without much effort. The second type is roller milling which is a mechanical process once the berry is put into the machine various processes such as cleaning, sorting, conditioning, gristing, removing of the bran and the germ which takes place and further only the endosperm is grinded to obtain refined flour. I'm sure it is a little difficult to understand so let's have a look at a video on milling. Flour made. We've been making flour for at least 6,000 years. Stone Age people took grain and crushed it between two stones. Although modern flour mills are very big and make thousands of tons of flour every day, the process really isn't that different. To make flour you need grain. Most flour that we use for bread is made from wheat grain. We grow over 16 million tonnes of wheat in the UK. It's usually planted in the autumn and it grows throughout winter, spring and summer, ready for harvest in August. The farmer harvests the wheat using a machine called a combine harvester. Then the grain is taken to the mill, ready to be ground into flour. Each grain of wheat is a seed, which would grow into a new wheat plant if it were put into the soil. The grain has three parts, the bran, which is the outside skin, the endosperm, which is the food store of the grain, and the wheat germ, which is the part of the grain that grows into a new plant if the grain germinates. A loaf of brown bread has all the parts of the grain in the flour. When the grain arrives at the mill, they take a sample to check the quality. If the grain passes the test, it's unloaded into the mill's storage area. The next job is to clean the grain that's just been delivered. They take out all of the straw, sticks and stones using these sieves. Then they blend different types of wheat together so they can make the right kind of flour. This is called gristing. The flour used in bread needs to have a lot of protein in it to make it soft but strong when it's baked. The milling happens in these machines, called plan sifters. The machines separate the different parts of the wheat using rollers and air bubbles, and this process creates the flour. The ground flour is then tested and checked for quality. Then it's transported to the bakery or to the shops, ready to bake your fresh loaf of bread. I'm sure any doubts would have been cleared by that video. Let's understand now the various flours used in the bakery. The first one on that is the whole wheat flour, also known as our tatuas, is, a cream, is creamy brown in appearance, has bran particles, and is coarse in texture and has a nutty flavor. To simply understand whole wheat flour is by understanding that the milling process, the entire grain is grinded to obtain this flour. 
The next one is refined flour, also known as maida, is creamy white in appearance and no bran or germ is present. It is smooth in texture and there are three types of refined flour that is required to be used in the bakery. This chart will help us understand that. The first one is strong flour with a gluten content or protein content of 12 to 14 percent, favorable to be used in making of breads. Medium flour, 60 percent strong and 40 percent weak, meaning that it is a blend of a strong and a weak flour, which has a protein content or gluten content of 9 to 11 percent and suitable for making pastries. Weak flour, which is a protein content of 7 to 9 percent and most suitable for making of cakes. The other flours that are available is the all-purpose flour, which is white flour milled from hard wheat kernel or a blend of hard and soft wheat. Bread flour, this is a blend of white flour and hard high protein wheat and has a greater gluten strength and is unbleached. Cake flour, fine texture, silky flour milled from soft wheat and low protein wheat. It has more of starch and less of protein, which keeps the pastries tender and delicate. Next is the self-raising flour, also known as phosphate flour, used to make convenient products like biscuits and breads. If you've understood, it is from a wide range of biscuits, cakes, cookies, and breads as well. So it can be used for any, any products in the bakery, made by adding baking powder and salt to all-purpose flour. The next is pastry flour. It is an intermediate between all-purpose and cake flour, milled from soft wheat used for pie crust, pastries, cookies, and cake. The other flours that are used in the bakery, not made from specifically wheat, is soya flour, ragi flour, malt, corn flour, all-purpose, self-raising, cake flour, pastry flour, etc. Thank you chefs for any queries and suggestions kindly mail on arunshrkr14 at gmail.com. Do not forget to uh, solve the link given for the quiz. Thank you.